Now, let's say there is a situation where Sam Smith is unable to resolve this case. Let's say he's been working with this customer for a long time and for some reason he's unable to, to close the case and uh, the customer has now escalated this issue to the management. So in case of okay. escalation, so in case of escalation uh, where Sam Smith is unable to resolve this case, you have this escalate option as well. So here okay. you can click on escalate and I'll just edit this. Now escalation could either be done by Sam Smith himself because if he, if he is unable to resolve a case or if there is a, a, a case uh, which is beyond his authority, let's say the customer is asking to refund a complete 100% amount and let's say if it's not the policy of the organization to give 100% refund. So in that case, he's going to escalate this issue himself to the internal management, right? Someone who is responsible of taking those decisions. So what he can okay. also do is go in the escalate tab over here, set an escalation message that uh, customer is asking for refund and need your approval right so you can escalate yes. the cases internally the organization and here i can select my escalate to so here i will select the relevant person who i need to escalate this case let's say i'm gonna escalate this to emmy so emmy is the person who is responsible uh for escalating uh, any refund related uh, cases so I'm going to enter e uh, uh, Amy and I am going to escalate this case to her. And I'm going to save this. And now you will be able to see in the escalation that there is Amy uh, 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 employee as, uh, assigned as escalated. Now, since Amy did not have any email address over here, uh, Therefore, there would no uh, email uh, communication or email notification going to Emmy. But in your production instance, if, if, if the employee records are correctly set with the email addresses, uh, whenever you do an internal escalation, automatically an email would also go to the person that you're escalating this issue. So now Emmy right. would also receive an email notification that there is a, a case that was escalated to her. And then she needs to you know, put her input and uh, make sure that this case is resolved. So, mm -hmm. so, I mean, you know, th these are all typical uh, conventional scenarios that you would see in a post uh, support management, right? Whenever you raise yeah. a case or a complaint, even if you buy something from a company and there, there is some warranty related issues or any product related issues, this is something that you would do, right? You would raise a ticket or a case, call them, they would give you a ticket number and start working on that ticket and finally, you know, close that. And in case if the if the support management is not giving you the right response, you would then be escalating that issue. All right. So, any any questions, Shivraj? At this point, is this all making sense? Yeah, uh, perfectly. But the thing is, uh, so uh, if a customer asks for us to replace uh, this Smith uh, as he uh, he's not resolving uh, the issues, so can we edit and replace uh, uh, some other name uh, instead of Smith? Is the process? Yeah, so if if you establish that uh, the customer needs to return the goods, then remember in our order to cash process, we had RMA, right? So you would then yeah. start processing an RMA based on the case record. So once you have okay. established that uh, there needs to be a return or a replacement, uh, the case would be closed once you process that RMA or refund. So here you will just identify if there is a, a need of return. And if you have established that there is a need of return, then you would ask your sales team to process a return and then the sales team would be going in the transactions and uh, you know there is this uh, option where you can generate your rmas so they would be identifying the sales order number and processing an rma and that's part of our you know return to uh, uh, credit process that we saw on our order to cash process okay 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 so okay. like uh, what so is so the these are all merge and en uh, enable sorry there is a uh, option now uh, is called as a merge and enable a spam lock. Uh, so, so what is the use of that? Yeah, I mean it is uh, enable spam lock just to make sure that uh, you know when whenever you are sending out emails against this case from NetSuite, uh, the spam lock is enabled. So uh, whenever the customer receives an email from us, it's not in their spam folder. So they are able to see their in, in their oh, inbox. Okay. So the, so that's that's the the idea, and with merge, I believe you know you can merge your cases. So you can merge uh, from case into another case. So if there are multiple cases against the same customer, you can uh, simply merge oh. those two cases into one. 
So right now there is no other cases available, but you can merge it into multiple multiple mm-hmm. cases into one case record. So okay. for mm-hmm. for better uh, better handling, let's say at, at the same point the customer has raised two cases, and if you realize that you know these are both related to the same issue, you can just merge it for your internal uh, operations and Correct. internal processing. Okay. Okay. Great. So in the real time, uh, based on these cases, we need to uh, work on it, uh, or else in the different way. Uh, sorry, Shivraj, can can you repeat your question? No, in the real time scenarios. So based on these cases, so we need to work. Uh, we need to perform, or else uh, uh, how we have to work. So how it will be used. In in real life. Um, so as I mentioned. In that, real time uh, scenarios. Yeah. Real time scenario. I'm, 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 so, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm not getting your question. What, what do you mean by real no, time? No, no. What I'm asking in the real time. So based on these cases, uh, we need to uh, perform our work, uh, or else how we are going to work. That's what. On what, on what base we need to work? Because based on these cases, we need, we are, we need to work. We need to perform our work. We need to deliver our work. So or else, uh, how uh, I'm asking. Yeah, I mean, if you're asking from from operational perspective, how an organization would be performing against the cases. So, you know, this mm-hmm. is the responsibility of the support team. So there is always a separate support team from your sales oh, team. So they are going to assign your, now that cases yeah, to us. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So this case management would be the sole responsibility of, a, of the customer support team that we have, uh, you know, in our internal organization. They would be working oh. with the cases and then uh, based on the case type, they would then be assigning internally those cases to the relevant teams. So if, if there was any okay. issue related to the sales pricing, they would then assign that case internally to the sales team. team. Yeah, yes. exactly. And if it was related to some item related uh, thing, then they would assign it to the warehouse team to look into that case. So it, the, the, the support manager or the relevant Sam Smith, you know, the, the person I assigned this case, he would be the person co- coordinating with the customer and then internally as well with the relevant teams. So that's how you know it would be working overall. Yes. Yeah. So like uh, uh, we will call it as a ticket number. So instead of ticket, we will call it as here a uh, case, right? Yeah. I mean, as as I mentioned, you can you can rename this case record. So if I go in, uh, let me just quickly say, set up company, and you have your rename uh, records. Remember our uh, yes, second yes. session where you can rename the records. Correct. So here yeah. I can, you know, change the name from case to ticket. If I save this. Oh, so both are same, right? Yeah, exactly. It's it's the same record. You can just simply rename it. So now if I go in list support, I can see tickets. So it's just the naming convention, and now it's it's all tickets. It's the the the, the mm-hmm. number and whatever, but it is now called a ticket within NetSuite. So the record, the table is all same. It's just the re- renaming or the terminology that you are using in your internal organization. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Fine. Great. Yeah. All right. And and you know, since we are talking about this, I would also like to show you some more things here. Um, so you have your interaction tab on the case record itself, where you can see all the interactions that happened with the customer and between the support rep. So this is this is all, uh, you know, showing you what happened with, between your customer and support rep. You can see all the emails, the primary contact, uh, any files, anything that was uh, you know attached on those emails, and then in the escalation tab, you can see if this was escalated to someone. You can also see that hmm. um, if if you let me just edit this. I also want to show you one more thing here, which is very cool. If I go again on the standard ticket form. Okay, and here you have your matrix. So if I click on this, notice you will have the ability to see uh, all the timings and duration and everything uh, that happened on this case. So you see, we have spent 16 minutes on this case. This case was open for 15 minutes and 33 seconds. And our initial response time was three minutes, 47 seconds. So it took our support wrap three minutes, 47 seconds to respond to this particular case. And uh, here yes. you can see the date created, the the the, the first updated date, the last reopened uh, date, and uh, you know the customer message received date. So these are all interaction details that NetSuite is capturing, and based on this, uh, you can get all your KPIs. 
So let's say if you want to see how your, uh, I mean, what is the average lead time a case is opened in your organization or a ticket is opened in your organization, you can have that information. So let's say if the management has established that whenever a case is generated, there should be only minimum 10 minutes of lead time, uh, lead response time from the support team. So now based on all these uh, information, you can do your key performance uh, in, uh, indicators and you can evaluate the performance of your support team. Uh, I mean, if I have set a lead time of 10 minutes, then it should not exceed from 10 minutes, right? But in this case, you can, you can see that this case was open for 15 minutes before it was responded, right? So again, uh, it, 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 it rings a bell for the management that the support team is either not performing well, or perhaps, you know, they can deep dive and find the root cause why, why this was delayed. So, so NetSuite offers all the, these, uh, you know, metrics uh, for your internal evaluations and uh, performance uh, indicators as well. Yes. Okay. Uh, now, again, yes. you know, there are certain companies that are very customer centric and uh, these information, this information that you see here is very important. And for another con uh, company who is not very customer centric or very, very you know, uh, focusing on the post sale support management, they might not be very much interested in all these details. So it, it all depends upon how, how you evaluate this information and how you take decisions based on this information and what are your internal processes and uh, internal values of, uh, for your post sale support management. So, yes. All right, so yeah, that, that's the overall process. Uh, let me quickly back come back to our agenda. So we have create, uh, created cases, we have created okay. some real life examples. Yeah, and we, we did see that in case if you need to escalate in case internally, how to do that. And uh, once overall case is completed, let's also review some case reports. So metrics is one option that you can get uh, by default on your uh, you know uh, case record itself. But then again, NetSuite also has a lot of standard reports that you can also review uh, as part of your daily or uh, weekly or monthly, you know, uh, report analysis or data analysis. So if I go in reports, and if I scroll down here to tickets, okay. So I, since I have renamed it, uh, it is now showing as tickets. So I, here I can see my open ticket analysis. I can see my closed ticket analysis. I can see my escalation uh, tickets and ticket activity by support rack. So I'm going to open them right. really quick. So open ticket analysis, as the name says, uh, this is where you are uh, trying to analyze all the open tickets between a, a from and to date. So between these two days, these were all the open tickets uh, summary. So so here you can see your support wrap that was assigned. And you, here you can see the average time of uh, open cases and the total cases. So this guy is taking an average time of 423 days, you know, for for an open case, yeah, which, which, is, which is really crazy. So now based on this report, you can really evaluate the, the performance of your support team and see what is the average time uh, a, a case is open for each support trap. So if it's taking too much time, then you would uh, definitely ask the particular support trap what is happening here. Why are they not uh, being so active in all those communication and closing the cases? So, you know, again, a good visibility for the management and the, the support managers to, to, to evaluate the performance of the support apps. And then if you click on yes. the, the cases, it will show you the details as well. So these are the detailed cases that was actually making up that 420 or 440 days. So Brad has been assigned on all these cases. These cases were created on this date, the, the last modified date. And this is the time, uh, you know, it has been open since. And it is still in open status. Yeah. And these are the companies uh, against which the cases were created. So, so this could be really alarming if the cases are open for so many days. And uh, definitely, you would want to close them as soon as possible. So again, a very yeah. good uh, detailed analysis report that would help you uh, make sure and, uh, your support operations are, are working efficiently. Yep. Okay, and then you have your closed ticket analysis uh, summary. So again, uh, this is basically an analysis that you are doing on all the closed tickets. So between a from date and to date, you can see all the all the closed tickets uh, and the, the support wraps that had uh, been assigned on those tickets. So Sam Smith, uh, again, you know, uh, took average time to close uh, uh, was 16 minutes, nine minutes. Uh, Mark Jones was two tickets between this time. So again, you know, you can you can see the number of average time uh, and the total count of the cases uh, 
uh, that uh, was taken by the support wrap to close a particular case. And if you want to see the detail, you can click on view detail. And here you can see uh, the Sam Smith uh, overall uh, analysis. So he was assigned basically on two cases between this, this time uh, frame. And the case started on this date and the date uh, it was closed was this date. So, and the time to close was uh, in minutes. So again, you know, uh, perhaps he's doing a good job and closing the cases uh, within minutes. All right. And then you have your ticket yes. activity or just case activity by support wrap. So between a from date and to date, you can see uh, the activity that the support wrap has been doing. So, so you can see that Brad was assigned on total 10 cases. His average initial response time was always good. You know, within two minutes, he was responding to the particular case. And uh, the average number of interactions that he has done. So everything is 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 be captured here. And let's let's see Sam Smith. So Sam Smith was actually assigned on five cases, and again his initial response time was was almost three minutes, and his average time to close the cases was eight minutes and fifty seconds, and his average inter interactions was this. And if I click on the details, okay, let me just change the time frame really quick. And here I can see that uh, the activity of Sam Smith. So from this date to this date, he was assigned on all these cases. These cases were created on this date, modified. This is the closing status, uh, and this is the company, and this is the, the the time to close that he took, and the interactions that he made. So you know, if I click on interaction. It will actually take me to the ticket record where I can see the interactions that uh, you know Sam Smith had actually made with the customer. So this is this is showing you all the activities that the support wrap was actually doing to close a case. So again, a very good report to to analyze your overall performance of your uh, of your support traps and your support function and making sure that they are working efficiently and effectively uh, to close the cases. Yes. So any, any, any questions, Shivraj? No, Shkod. Yeah, good.